But people don't understand, right? Yes, there is two sides. There is two sides to growth. Number one is of course the knowledge. As you see there, a lot of people say, yes, knowledge is power, knowledge is power, knowledge is power. But the truth is, knowledge is only potential. What makes that knowledge actually powerful is action. How many of us over lockdown, before lockdown, or even coming back to school, how many of us have felt overwhelmed? How many of us have felt a huge amount of stress and a huge amount of anxiety, right? Most of us, whether we like to admit it or not, some of us is anxious. I'm gonna throw it out as a big claim. Anxiety is rarely ever caused by action, but it is caused by overthinking. How many of us just overthink everything and we just think, 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 and then we do nothing? It's quite common, right? It's okay to set all the goals in the world, but if you're not gonna take that first step, then it's kind of like, what's the point? But does that make sense? I don't know if you guys over the whole lockdown period, I don't know if you guys, well, most of you probably watched a bit of Netflix. Did anyone catch the Michael Jordan Last Dance documentary, anyone? A few of you are saying yes. When Michael Jordan went up for that last shot, to win the game, to win the whole championship. He wanted the ball and everybody knew he was gonna get the ball. He's not there thinking, okay, what if I miss this shot? Then I'm gonna be on the papers and people are gonna send me death threats. We lose everything, I'm gonna lose money. He didn't think about that. He just asked for the ball and he took the shot because he's done the work. Whether he got it in or whether he didn't, it didn't matter. The next day he was back in the gym training. Action. And that has nothing to do with intelligence, nothing. That has everything to do with character. A lot of people didn't give me much opportunities. The only thing that I've had is action, consistency over and over again. You think, I claim now to be one of the best speakers in the UK, even in the world at my age doing what I'm doing. But yeah, do you think there's better people out there who probably speak better than me? Who are probably more intelligent than me? Of course. But at the same time, every single day I'm putting in the work. I hope you enjoyed that quick clip. And I know it's a lot easier said than done, right? Action over anxiety, I get it. It's a lot easier to say it than it is to do it. And it's not an overnight fix. However, in this next clip, I wanna quickly show you um, the kind of process that I went through and how I overcame it. But then after this clip, I'm also gonna dive into a bit more detail. So check it out, my friend, and we're See you on the next bit. Picture this, eight years ago when I first ever started to do speaking in front of groups, I had about 15 words in my vocabulary. I hated the way I sounded and looked. I mean, at that time I had severe acne and I still got the scars on my face today. I was terrified of talking in front of groups. I even hated one-on-one -on -one conversations. I used to overthink everything. What would happen? How would people react? What would people think? Would they laugh at me? What if I say something wrong and a list of things can really, really go on? The more I thought about these things, the worse it got. And it would result in me not turning up or the talk being terrible because I was so nervous and my mind was everywhere else. But once, I had a long drive as I had a talk in a school. The traffic was busy, which meant I turned up five minutes before I was supposed to go on stage. When I arrived, I signed in, went straight to the hall and plugged in my session and just started. At that time, it was probably one of the best talks I have ever delivered. I didn't have the time to think about everything, what could go wrong. I didn't have time to think whether they would like me. My only option was action. That changed a lot for me and made me realize what was possible. I know I was overthinking everything, which was causing a huge amount of overwhelm and stress. When in reality, if I just continue to take the necessary steps, instead of just thinking about all the external factors, I would have been much happier and felt better about myself. This may resonate with many of you, especially if you are doing your GCSEs. It's easy to overthink your exams. It is easy to think that these exam exams will define your future. 
when you start to think about the worst case scenarios. Instead, we should put our energy on action. We cannot control what grades we get, but we can control how much effort we put in. If we start taking control of this, regardless of the grades, we will know we tried our best. So guess what? When your exams arrive, you wouldn't feel as stressed or overwhelmed or anxious because you have put in the work, or as I like to call it, the action.